Fire is an incredibly important part of the web of life in southern Arizona and natural biological cycles. And it definitely has a role, and we need to let it get back to playing that role. But when fires happen these days, they happen in a context of forests that have already been seriously damaged by human impacts over the years, and a lot of different types of impacts. But probably the biggest one is fire suppression. So for decades, for actually a century now, we have not let fires play their normal role on the mountain. And therefore, when they happen today, they, they happen differently. Rarely is wildlife overrun by wildfire. They're fleet of foot enough to get out of the way, or in cases of smaller creatures, burrow underground. And these animals, for generations, are adapted to these fires. Yes, maybe they're not where we would expect them to be. You know, you never know, because it's wildlife, and they do what they want to do. Sometimes re-entering burned areas when it's still smoldering. A Gould's turkey, and we observed doing that very thing. And it's a 155,000 acre mountain range. There's still plenty of territory out there for them, and they're going to use it. The Catalinas are a typical Sky Island mountain range. They rise up very steeply from the desert floor and the arid grasslands that are around the base. And up at the top, you go all the way to spruce fir, conifer forest. And that means that every step of the way, you have a different set of plants and animals that call it home. The biodiversity of our Sky Island mountain ranges in southern Arizona is globally recognized, and they have been recommended as a huge priority for protection from a global biodiversity perspective. The initial burning took place in the Bighorn Sheep Management Area, and most of that Bighorn Sheep Management Area burned. We're cautiously optimistic the bighorns will make better use of that area and perhaps expand their territory. It will be cleared of dense vegetation. There will be new growth coming up and it will be perfect for them. Sprouting prickly pear, for example, is a favorite. It's like a bighorn sheep salad bar after a fire. The way they defend themselves is through their keen eyesight, which if a predator is concealed by a brush they can't really use, and then their ability to climb rapidly over rough terrain. For sure, it's going to help them deal with mountain lions and other, and other ungulates, I should add. Well, White-tailed deer at higher elevations and mule deer at lower elevations will also reap the benefit of that cleared up habitat and that new growth. The Sonoran Desert is renowned for its diversity of bees and other insects. We also have many mammals, coati and ringtail and foxes and coyotes and black bears and bobcats and other predators. And we also have a lot of reptiles, lizards and snakes and Gila monsters and you know some species that aren't found anywhere else. You know, and I think we should be proud of that. It's, it's something that we should care for and protect. When you look at the interaction of fire with endangered species, you really have to look through a different lens. And Mexican spotted owl is one of them. And so we have what are called protected activity centers, where those owls are known to do their business, they either nest or hunt. So they rely on a certain combination of vegetation, plant species, and water availability, and a certain topography or forest structure. You know, we need to be nimble to respond to these threats and give these species the best chance that we can to survive. We also take a look at desert tortoise habitat. We don't worry about desert tortoises being overrun by fire. They burrow underground. But what are they going to eat when they come out of that burrow? Everything around them is going to be burned and they're going to have to travel a long way to get there. We had a case a few years ago with a monument fire for Chiricahua leopard frogs, which are a threatened species. Uh, they were in a pond and we could look above them and see a major burned area. We got in there, we pulled all the frogs out, sent them up to Glendale Community College for a while. The very next day, a slide came in and silted in the entire pond that they had been inhabiting. Would have killed them all. That's why we took almost 900 endangered Gila chub out of the west branch of Sabino Creek 
and farm them out to the U of A, International Wildlife Museum, and the Desert Museum for safekeeping. When the monsoon passes, when all that silting action is over, we'll put them back in. We hardly had any monsoon at all, so there wasn't really a big problem with a lot of erosion and a lot of soil being lost as a result. Now, that could still happen at any time, you know. I mean, it only takes one really big storm to have that kind of impact. So in one way, maybe that was a good thing. But in another way, it just makes it that much more difficult for the habitat to recover, for those seeds to germinate and for the vegetation to come back. Water is more scarce, food is more scarce for the time being, and that is a challenge to many species. Now that said, the Bighorn Fire in particular burned pretty well for the most part. There were a couple of really bad days with high winds, but for the most part it burned in a mosaic. It did not burn really severely, and I think you'll see the mountain bouncing back pretty well. It's not going to look like it used to look tomorrow, but a year or two it's going to be good. In most cases, wildfire is a natural process that improves the overall health of the mountain range over time. Lightning started this fire, as it did long before man inhabited Tucson. There were fires in the Catalinas and these other mountain ranges. And these animals, for generations, they've survived. The general consensus is by the end of this century, half the species on this planet could be gone. And to me, that's very alarming, even from a, a perspective of self-interest. <laughs> I am a species on this planet, Homo sapiens. I still rely on that mountain for clean water and clean air, you know, just like all the animals do. We got to get serious about protecting these places and the web of life that supports all of us, including Homo sapiens. <laughs>